So last night I sat down and I started playing with Ubuntu 2304 Lunar Lobster. And I was really impressed. Very impressed. So for a long time ago, we used to do installs on Proxmox. And I'm thinking I might do one just for this because I was so impressed with the installer and just the general startup experience. Super happy with it, and I'd like to show it to you. Also, those install videos usually did pretty well. So with that, I'd like to head over to my desktop and our Proxmox web interface and start out by showing you how to get it installed. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to local, and then we're gonna select ISOs. My ISOs are already selected. So now that we're at ISO screen, we need to go off and get the ISO from Ubuntu. So the first thing we're gonna to do to do that is open a new tab, and I'm going to search for Ubuntu. So here at the Ubuntu screen, you can notice the first one you see is not the 2304, it's still the 2204. But if we scroll down, we now see the Lunar Lobster 23.04 download page. And we can press download, and it's going to attempt to start our download. Let's just go ahead and hit cancel. Right click on download now, and copy link address. Now back at our Proxmox web interface, we're going to press download from URL. We're going to paste in the URL, hit query URL. Hash algorithm, I've downloaded this once before, so I know we're going to set that to 256. Then we're going to go back to our Ubuntu page. We're going to hit verify download, and it's going to give us this screen. Well, all we want out of the information is this highlighted content here. So we'll copy it, go back to Proxmox, and we're going to paste it in here. Now we're going to press download. So as you can see now, Ubuntu, or Proxmox rather, has downloaded the Ubuntu image. It has checked the checksum, and it has done the whole verification process, including adding the Ubuntu ISO to its storage disk. Very, very convenient. I know I've shown you this before, but I still think this was a great improvement over the old way we did it. All right, so we're going to close out this screen. And we see 23.04 here. All right, so with that, it's time to start creating our VM. So up here in the top right-hand corner, we're going to click Create VM. And we now have a new VM screen. First thing we want to do is give it a name. And then we can press Next. For OS, we're going to use a CD DF DVD disk image or ISO file. We stored ours in local. That's the default location for Proxmox to store such files. And we're going to just hit the drop down for ISO image and click on Ubuntu 2304. We can leave Linux alone over here because we're installing Linux. Hit next. We're going to check QEMU guest agent even though it's not installed by default. It'll Ease our processes later on. We're going to leave graphics card and everything else by default right now. If you had Snap, uh, Spice or something like that, you could change this at this point, but I don't, and I'm not even passing through a video card at this moment. So we'll hit next. We're going to leave some all of these features alone. 32 gigs will be plenty for today's test. If you feel you need more, go ahead and turn it off. No problem with that. Now I'm on an SSD, so I'm going to check discard so I don't damage my SSD as badly. And hit next again. Now, I think if I remember right, the Ubuntu 22.04 uh, had the same minimum requirements as 22.03. But when you read the documentation, Ubuntu states it just that way. So if I remember right, it was two CPU cores required and two gigs of RAM for Ubuntu 22.04. So we're going to go ahead, give it two cores, because I only have four here, 
and I need at least one core for Proxmox to run on. So with that, we're going to press Next, and I am actually going to give this a little bit more RAM. So I'm going to give it 4 gigs, and then I'm going to change this to 2 gigs minimum, as I don't have a lot of RAM for this system, and if something else needs it, I don't mind sharing it. Now we'll hit Next. I have some different network configurations in my Proxmox system so that my VMs and stuff work on a different VLAN. So I'm going to go ahead and select my other bridge, which is going to push them off onto a different VLAN. I could also do it by changing VLAN tagging here, but I have mine all set up on a bridge. So that's how I'm going to continue to use them. Now I'm going to hit Next, and I can look through this and verify it if I want. Hit Finish and my VMs created over here. All right, so now it's time to start the installation process. This is actually really easy. So we're just gonna press Start, press Console, and our display is gonna come alive. We're gonna press Enter at this point. And here's our Wittner Lobster installation process ready to be used. Now you can notice that we've strayed a lot away from the old graphical style and also the old command line style. And I was very presently impressed when I was greeted with this for the first time. I think it's a really nice, modern, smooth image, and I, I had a really good impression of it. We can move things around if we want to. So we're going to select in English uh, language because I speak English. Press Next. We're going to install Ubuntu. So we're again going to press Next. Again, we have a U.S. keyboard, not a U.K. keyboard because I'm in the United States. So we're just going to press Next. I do not have a Wi-Fi connection. I didn't pass one through to my VM. So cabled is going to be just fine. That's what my QEMU drivers are going to emulate and what we set up on our network controller. So we'll hit next. I want to do a normal install. I want to have all the utilities and games and everything that Canautilus packages with Ubuntu by default. If not, I could select minimum install. The minimum install is going to give you the basic utilities you need to get started with Ubuntu, things like sudo and stuff like that, disk disk imaging tools and whatnot, and a web browser so you can download you, your own stuff. Now, if you have a highly customized instance of Ubuntu, that might be the right selection for you. I am going to skip installing third-party software. If you were installing this Ubuntu on maybe a laptop or a different system, this is probably a pretty good one to check. I'm also not going to download and install support for additional media formats. You also may want to do that. Um, I'm going to be doing this as a demo, and I just don't have a need for it. All right, so I'm pressing Next. I want to erase the entire disk and use the entire disk. We only passed one disk image through from Proxmox, so that's the best way to do this here on Proxmox. If I wanted a fancier setup, I could press Advanced Features and look at using things like LVM. I really have no need for LVM uh, other than if I wanted to encrypt my drive, and I don't need to do that here today. And manually partitioning would allow me to create a separate drive inside of my images. Again, if I was to do this, I would pass through another drive from Proxbox and do the mount process and everything. That's my personal preference. I feel it works a little bit smoother and is just a little more compatible with Proxmox. With that being said, there may be some limitations to that setup with backup. I haven't really tried it because I don't do that a lot. Um, so my suggestion for you, unless you're an advanced user, you probably want to just erase the entire drive. All right, so we're going to use that. Now, this is really nice. It was all selected and ready to go. My partitions are all set up, and this was a nice departure from the previous Ubuntu installs I've done. I've had to make sure I clicked the right windows in the right places and moved around, 
or I got stuck in endless loops or didn't format the drive at all. So we'll just hit install. My time zone that's correct for me has already been selected. So I'm going to hit next. And now it's time to enter your username and whatnot. We can, if you don't want to log in every time when we initially start the computer, if you want it to just start up and be logged in, we can turn this flip switch to require a password on login to off. I'm going to turn it off just so you can see what it looks like. By default, it's on, and that might be a little bit more secure. If it's off and somebody started up your computer, they could automatically just jump into a session and start using it and wouldn't be presented with a login screen until afterwards. Where we're here in a VM, this might be a little less important. You have to get into Proxmox and start it from Proxmox. Up to you what choices you do. I traditionally leave these on, but today I'm going to leave it off just to test the experience. Now we're going to hit next. This was also really nice. Ubuntu is going to present us with a question whether we want the light or dock experience. It also makes a note that we can always change it later on. Here's what dark looks like. Here's what light looks like. Pretty sure you guys are pretty familiar with that. And I'm going to leave it on light as I feel it picks up a little bit better with screen recording. So we're going to hit next. And here's the installation process. Okay, so here's Lunar Lobster after its first boot, and you can notice it's a fairly responsive little display. But if we look right up here, you can see that we still don't have QEMU guest agent installed. So the first thing I want to do is get that up and running. So to do that, we're going to click on these fancy nine dot pattern here, and then that's going to bring us up to kind of our applications manager. And we're going to click on our terminal. And again, I'm sorry, we're having a little bit of a graphics glitch here. We don't have a GPU pass through on this particular system. And sometimes we do get a few little glitches like that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is type apt, or actually, I'm going to type sudo because we're not in a root user apt update and make sure our repositories are up to date. And then I'm going to enter my password. So now that our repositories are updated, I can enter sudo apt install qemu guest agent dash y. And this is going to install that guest agent that we've talked about. Now we're going to have to reboot this in order for it to work. And we can't just do a reboot. We actually have to shut it down and start it again. So I'm going to type sudo. Actually, I'm going to do it here, not through the command line, because it's actually faster. If you do it through the command line, it gives you a minute before it shuts down. So I'm going to just shut down. All right, so the system is now shut down. So we can again press start and console. And here is Ubuntu 23.04 back up and running on Proxmox. And you can see that now our guest agent is communicating back with Proxmox. So we get actual up to date and good stats in the process, the Proxmox monitor about RAM usage and CPU usage as well as a communication on what our IP address is. So I haven't done a lot of exploring about with Lunar Lobster, but one of the noted things is, is they've, they've increased the speed of snap packages. So Firefox used to be quite hard to load and or timely to load because we're forced to load Firefox in a snap package inside of Ubuntu. And they say they've increased that speed after the first login. Now, again, we're kind of doing a not a very good emulation of it where we don't have a graphics card pass through and the CPU is having to do all the graphics calculations. But that was a pretty good load, in my opinion. And they say the next one should be faster. And that is absolutely like that's good performance.
it says we have some updates and if you saw i had three that i needed to install i'm just going to exit it for now um looks like it automatically mounted my cd-rom that passed through and it looks like we got in this a fair assortment of packages passed through including even transmission that's kind of funny to see anyways there is lunar lobster install on proxmox i hope you enjoyed today's video and please considering liking, sharing, and subscribing for more content like this.